so hello dear students so this morning we dealt with the poem uh, our cassia arena tree by turudat here i come with the next poem by the same poet and the title is the lotus so you might have seen about the biographical details of the uh, poet as i have already told you to do in the morning time so i hope with this background information on turudat we can start our discussion on the next poem that is the lotus wait let me just take the text of the poem for uh, my reference here well so look at the word and the title lotus when we look at this flower lotus we know that it is very special what is its speciality one thing that it is one of the most elegant flowers number 2 it is special because it grows up in mud and overcomes its troubles and blooms very beautifully even though coming from mud so it can be compared to a real life hero who comes from a very poor background and struggles a lot and finally uh, becomes a very famous person in the world so lotus is a symbol for success after a lot of struggle also then another important aspect that is related to lotus is the flower lotus is very significant in uh, uh, hindu mythologies you might be aware that the images of gods and goddesses one the image of lakshmi the goddess of wealth she sits on the uh, lotus flower okay padme sthitam padma varanam that is a description of goddess lakshmi padme sthita she is sitting on the lotus the another example for lot uh, the god sitting on the lotus is lord brahma brahma sits on the lotus which has come out of the navel of vishnu lord vishnu so lotus is very important even in indian mythologies it is the symbol of richness it is the symbol of beauty it is the symbol of elegance and it is also the symbol of peace we need to keep this at the backdrop before learning the poem lotus because as i said in the morning lecture in the lecture uh, that turudat tries to glorify tries to uphold the hindu mythology even though we can see the elements of western philosophy and the eastern philosophy in her poems finally we see that she upholds the indian philosophy and indian mythology when it comes to the matter of this poem the lotus this poem is written in the form of a sonnet and we all know what is a sonnet right so basically it's a it is an Im imitation of european poetry poetic style called sonnet it's a petrarchan sonnet with octave and a sestet octave is the first eight lines of the sonnet and the sestet is the last six lines of the sonnet and we know the basic um, characteristic feature of sonnet is that in the first eight lines some problem is mentioned and in the sestet part in the, that is in the last six lines solution is given to the problem that was raised in the first eight lines so you need to be clear about this background before learning this poem this sonnet rather called the lotus okay all right and you might be aware that there is a genre there is a uh, type of literature called as allegory it it became very famous during the renaissance poetry and uh, pe uh, poets like edmund spenser philip sidney uh, and many other poets during that time have used this form of allegory in which an abstract concept such as love truth uh, divinity purity such concepts are given uh, personified 
um, human figure and they are literally personified so personification of the abstract concepts is what we call as allegory and the concept of allegory was also used in the uh, morality plays and miracle plays which were the predecessors of english drama so in this poem the lotus this poem is very simple poem it moves on in a very smooth way the difficulty is very less compared to the previous poem that we have studied already so in this poem written by torudat it seems it reminded me of a lesson we had studied in school in in a kannada textbook if you had the same text you might remember this in a kannada textbook maybe in fifth or sixth sem uh, fifth uh, fifth or sixth class when we were studying in the school there was a lesson called pushparagale in it in which many varieties of flowers compete in the race of beauty each one is claiming that it is beautiful okay and uh, they come with their own justification for their claim to be beautiful or to be the most beautiful flower so it's it's a sort of competition and a quarrel and a conflict between different flowers to attain the superiority in this poem also there is a competition a competition between flowers for supremacy in terms of beauty so the poem goes like this first i will as as is our routine as is our schedule we will first read out the lines from the poem and then i would like to analyze the poem slowly love came to flora asking for a flower that would of flowers be undisputed queen the lily and the rose long long had been rivals for that high honor bards of power had sung their claims the rose can never tower like the pale lily with her junomia but is the lily lovelier thus between flower factions rang the strife in psyche's bower give me a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride but of what color rose red love first chose and lily white the queenliest flower that blows so this is the beautiful sonnet written by torudat it is an allegorical poem because here there is a lot of allusion there are lot of allusions to the greek mythology for example here there is an allusion to the goddess of love called aphrodite love is allegorized here personified and flora is the goddess of flowers both these gods or goddesses come in uh, greek mythology and again there are uh, words like junomian and then psyche's bower these are also allusions to uh, greek mythology so when we look at this poem it is in the rhyming pattern simple rhyming pattern that is very commonly found in all the sonnets a b b a a b b a c d c d d c and this poem is unlike the previous poem in which the speaker was speaking to the reader first and then the speaker was speaking to the uh, kashwar in a tree this poem in this poem the the lines are in the form of dialogue it is it is not the dialogue between the speaker and the reader but it is the dialogue between aphrodite that is the goddess of love and flora that is the goddess of flower flowers so it is it continues in the form of dialogue so here you because of these references because of these allusions to greek mythology we can see the influence of european culture on the writing of torudat 
further. So the po poem begins, the poem begins like this. Love came to Flora. So the goddess of love. It seems that uh, the goddess Aphrodite needed some flower which was extremely beautiful, which was the queenliest of all flowers. So you should, uh, you should also mark the words which are very uh, gender specific here. The goddess Aphrodite is not asking for the kingliest flower, rather it is asking for queenliest flower. Here we need to understand the basic uh, principle that runs behind these lines. Always flowers in any culture if you go, flowers are always considered symbol of beauty, symbol of love, symbol of peace, symbol of simplicity. And in turn, these qualities of love, simplicity, grandeur, beauty, these are these are characterized to be the features. These are the lotus. Says that Aphrodite or the goddess of love is asking for queenliest flower, not the kingliest flower. So we need to understand this. Uh, subtle difference between the concept of male stereotyping and female stereotyping when it comes to the concept of beauty, love and flowers. So, love came to Flora. Flora is again personified goddess of flowers asking for a flower. It seems that love needed a flower to boast of itself. And what we usually connect to when it comes to love, we usually say ro red rose is the symbol of love because we have that poem by Robert Burns. If you remember, my love is like a red, red rose. So red, red rose is always considered as a symbol of love. But now the goddess of love, Aphrodite, is in confusion. It needed a flower which was most beautiful of all the flowers and which was queenliest in its grandeur. Queenliest, the word queenliest refers to beauty as well as its grandeur. It should be grand. It should be uh, respectable. It should be deserving. <clears throat> so love came to Flora asking for a flower. What kind of flower love needed? That would of flowers be undisputed queen. This flower should be queenliest it should be undisputed there should be no doubt whenever somebody looks at this flower a person should say yes this is the flora the goddess of flowers has a huge collection of flowers in front of her there are lilies there are jasmines there are roses there are lotuses there are um, other kind of orchids there are so many flowers in front of the uh, goddess of flowers flora among all these flowers there are two flowers which are extremely beautiful. One is the lily, which is known for its pure rivals, which are competing for the post of queenship among the flower kingdom. The lily and the rose long, long had been rivals for that high honor. So there was always a competition, hidden competition, cold war between rose, grandeur, which represented simplicity, and on the other hand, rose was boasting of its own beautiful color shade, which was always considered as a symbol of love. So there was a competition between these two flowers and these were like rivals from the beginning. So again, here we need to understand that this is also a, an example for personification. Bars of power had sung their claims. Bars of power. I mean, bars of power means powerful poets, poets with a lot of influence, poets with a lot of fame. Right from the days, right from the earlier days, earlier eras, poets have given a lot of importance to both these flowers, the lily and the rose. Bars of power had sung their claims. The rose can never tower like the pale lily with her genomian. Some, some, some poets said the rose cannot equal 
to the beauty of lily okay rose can never tower tower look at the word used here tower means it is at the peak lily the flower of lily is at the peak of its beauty pale lily the lily although it is pale it is extremely beautiful with her junomian junomian is is the symbol of love rose being the symbol of love can cannot be equal to lily in its beauty but is the lily lovelier but what about the lily then lily is also not uh, very dull lily is also beautiful in its own way thus beautiful be, thus between flower factions you see how there are factions factions means groups as people fight by making one and the other groups even the flowers can make groups again this is an imaginative truth it is not the real truth as we know what kind of rival tree can can there be among the flowers and trees it is only in the human world that we have rivalries and the feelings of community okay but here again because it is personification it is poet's imagination that some flowers are supporting rose and some flowers are supporting lily and there have become two factions flower factions groups of supporting flowers one group is supporting the lily and the other one is supporting the rose flower factions rank the strife in psyche's bower psyche's bower is again it's a reference to the greek philosophy greek mythology and psyche's bower is always full of psyche is again a god and he has his own bower which is always full of flowers multiple flowers varieties of flowers and because of these arguments between two groups one group supporting the rose and the other group supporting the lily there became a strife there became a struggle there they started a chaos among the flowers which were in the psyche's power give me a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride now it was difficult for flora as well as aphrodite to choose one among the two most beautiful flowers rose is known for its deliciousness its soft petals and beautiful red shade and on the other hand lily which is purely white is a symbol of pride and symbol of high respect dignity so aphrodite was asking flora now give me a flower which has both the qualities it should be graceful it should be delicious beautiful as well as it should be stately and grand in its pride so give me a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride so it should have both the qualities so now it is the real trouble because how can you combine these two flowers and cloning was not at possible right so it was difficult for flora to decide which flower to give back to aphrodite who was asking for a combination of these two flowers and it became very difficult then but of what color now there was a confusion to flora goddess flora because on one side it is uh, the uh, the goddess of love aphrodite is asking for a red rose and on the other side she is also asking for a white lily so what color you need but of what color rose red love first chose then prayed no lily white or both provide even aphrodite was so much confused uh, that it it was very difficult to choose between these two flowers so sometimes it happens right we have two choices in front of us and both the, both of them are equally good we are unable to decide which one to choose ultimately but we have to make an intelligent choice and it is impossible all the time that's why robert frost road uh, sorry wrote the poem the road not taken when he wanted to take the road which was not taken by others he had to leave the first option untouched so it is difficult to choose between two most beautiful choices it is a confusion now for both aphrodite and for flora 
So it uh, Aphrodite wanted first said it should be red in color like a rose and then white in color like a lily or both provide. Then it came to conclusion Aphrodite she said no I want the combination of both the colors that is red and white mixed is pink and Flora gave the lotus. And Flora then decides oh you want the combination of these two colors then we have the most beautiful flower that is the lotus which is pink in color which is equally beautiful gorgeous grand as well as worthy of respect because it comes out of a lot of mud and squelch and comes over the surface of water and blooms extremely beautifully flora gave the lotus which is combination red rose red dyed and lily white so it is the it is a pink color the queenliest flower that blows and flora says see you needed a queenliest flower here is the lotus for you it is equally beautiful equally grand equally worthy of respect so it combines all the best qualities of all the flowers in the world and stands as the symbol of peace stands as the symbol of beauty stands as the symbol of grandeur so this is take this this lotus is the queenliest of all the flowers and love perhaps what happens after that is not given but perhaps aphrodite is satisfied because now she got the most beautiful and the most deserving candidate for the queenhood among the flowers so this is about the um, understanding of the poem the poem is extremely simple what we need to understand what is the overall theme of the poem so we need to understand that it is a, it is the combination which uh, was found in the personality of Torudat. Torudat, although she was from India, she was, uh, I mean, she was taught in a totally Christian atmosphere, in a convent atmosphere, convent schools rather, in those days of Europe, um, English occupation. But then she had deep respect and regard for Indian mythologies. And ultimately, she upholds the pride of India and Lotus is symbolic of Indian culture and uh, Hindu mythologies which she loved from the bottom of her heart. And in this poem, we see a combination of East and West once again as we had seen in the first poem that is our Kashuarina tree. So this completes our discussion on the poem, The Lotus, hoping to meet you soon. Thank you.